Praise the Lord. Worship room. God is so awesome and worthy to be praised on this morning. I am just so elated to be before you on this morning. Hey, look, welcome. Welcome to the worship room, wherever you are. If you are on our Facebook, um, Facebook page, make sure that you like tag and invite somebody tag somebody let somebody know that the worship room is on amen if you are on on our uh youtube go ahead and subscribe and then invite somebody as well amen and our web portal right there on our web portal you can invite somebody there amen let somebody know the worship room is on that there's a word for them it's a song oh my god oh my god ah, the prayer is just for them amen now tag somebody that you know they're going through a little something something amen tag somebody you know that they need a prayer they need a breakthrough on today i decree and declare that breakthroughs are in the room on today amen so let's look to the lord in prayer father in the name of jesus god i thank you and i praise you for all that you're doing god god i thank you and i praise you for this morning god god oh god heavenly father oh god oh god jehovah jireh jehovah nisi jehovah shalom oh god we love on you in this morning oh God in this moment God we love you oh God on this morning that you're awesome you're wonderful that you are our way maker God you are our trouble trouble uh, keeper God God you keep trouble from us in the name of Jesus God God you remove every hindrance every doubt in the name of Jesus and God I thank you God I thank you God God I love on you in this moment God God I love on you God God that you're just oh, your Abba. You are Yahweh. You are the beginning and the end. You are our sovereign ruler. God, I thank you and I praise you on this morning, God. God, we set the atmosphere, oh God, for you to move. Have your way on today, God. Have your way. Have your way in their homes, God. Have your way in their minds, God. Have your way in their bedrooms, God. Have your way in the name of Jesus, move every doubt, remove every hindrance in the name of Jesus, God. God calls us to hear with our heart, God, and not just our ears. God, I thank you and I praise you, God, for all that you're doing, God, in the name of Jesus. See, Move like never before, God. God, I thank you. Oh, God, for the songs, God. God, I thank you for the songness, God. I thank you for the musicians, God. In the name of Jesus, touch them, God. Touch them. In the name of Jesus, touch her. In the name of Jesus, bless them. Bless their finances. In the name of Jesus, breakthroughs in every area of their life, God. Breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, God, we receive the blessings of the Lord to make us rich and add no sorrow. So, God, I say thank you. I pray for each and every viewer in the name of Jesus, God. Do what you do best in their life, God. Remove. Oh, God, I speak breakthroughs on today. Uh, breakthroughs uh, in their finances, God. I buy worry right now in the name of Jesus. Worry is to not in the name of Jesus, God. God, we trust you even when we can't trace you. We trust you, God, with our very lives, God. And we give you a renewed yes uh, in the spirit. We give you a renewed yes uh, in the name of Jesus. And God, we would be so honored and worthy to give your name praise. God, we love you. God, there's no one like you. Uh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. God, so we praise you. Uh, we worship you. We honor you for who you are. Not just what you can do, God, but for who you are. Uh, uh, God, we thank you that you're Abba. We thank you that you're Yahweh. We thank you, God, that you're doing it. You're moving. You're removing. God, touch marriages right now, God. Touch our children right now in the name of Jesus, God. Touch Apostle Marcus right now in the name of Jesus, God. Touch. Touch in the name of Jesus. Give him the desires of his heart that be in your will in Jesus' name. God, we thank you that you're doing it, God. Behold, all things are new. Behold, all things are new. Behold, all things are new. So God, I thank you, God, that daily you load us up with benefits. So God, I say thank you. Have mercy on the side. Do it right now. Do it right now. Do it in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for all that you're doing. God, I see you. 
I see you moving. I feel you. I feel the presence. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I thank you, God, for your tangible anointing, your tangible presence. In the name of Jesus, and God, we say thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you again. Welcome. Welcome wherever you are. Welcome. 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 If you're in the United States or abroad, welcome. We love you in the worship room. Amen. Tell somebody that we're on. Like, share, and invite. Amen. And now we'll have our praise and worship to take us further in the service. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I know someone has a testimony. We all have our own testimonies. So fill, it up, fill us up with joy, God, today as we sing your praises and praises to your name, oh God. Thank you for our testimonies, oh God. Oh, oh, oh. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for a cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Yeah. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. And my praise belongs to you forever. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Oh, and my praise belongs to you forever. So we say, this is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Wherever you are, put your hands together right there. You've got a testimony. dead you're not done greater things are still to come oh I believe if I'm not dead he's not done you're still alive greater things are still to come oh I believe if I'm not dead you're not done oh greater things are still to come oh I believe if I'm not dead you're not dead still to come oh I believe oh this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is come on sing it now this is my testimony from death Grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Hey. Thank you for my testimony. together wherever you are 
Thank you, God, for your testimony. Thank him for your testimony. That means that you made it over if you have a testimony. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We give you everything that we have. If it were not for you, the Lord, that was on my side, where, where would I be? Where would you be if it weren't for the Lord on your side? We give you everything, oh God. We owe it all to you. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Come fill my life from the inside, from the inside of me. Set me on fire. Of me, cause all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be Somebody knows this said from the inside. Oh, from the inside of me. May you delight deep down in the inside. In the inside of me. Come on and fill my life from the inside. From the inside of me, set me on fire from the inside, oh, in the inside of me, cause all I want, oh God, is for you, hey, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, you to get the glory, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you.
we lift your name higher and higher and higher. Because oh, all I want is for you, you to be glorified. And you to be lifted high. All I want, oh, is for you. You to be glorified. And you to be lifted high. Higher than my finances, God. Higher than my career, oh God. Higher than my family, oh God. Higher than my ego, oh God. Higher than my appearance, oh God. Higher than everything that I own, oh God. Any asset I own, oh God. Higher, higher, higher. Oh, cause all I want is for you. You to be glorified. For you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Oh. Thank you, God. Well, good morning. God bless you. There's something in the atmosphere. I simply want all of you to shout from the inside of me. My God from glory. If that isn't enough to get you in the place where you can worship, just wherever you are, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on the portal, or whether you're on Facebook, just simply say from the inside of me. Woo, all I want is you, God. Hallelujah. Where are my worshipers at? Come on. All I want is you, God, from the inside of me. Come on. I want you to throw that in the atmosphere. God bless you and good morning. I feel something in here, Apostle. I feel the anointing of God. I feel breakthrough in this atmosphere. And some of you, while you were looking at your device, you were looking at your phone, you slipped into a different place. I want you to decree that from the inside of me. God, I thank you that you think enough of us to live on the inside of me. I dare somebody to shout that, and he resides in me. Woo! And he resides in me. Ha! Huh? And he resides in me. He thinks enough of me, Pastor Erica, to live on the inside of me. God, I thank you, hey, that you take habitation, hey, on the inside of us, that he thinks enough of us. Hi, yeah, come on, pass your mess, huh? pass your mistakes, huh? pass your bloops and blunders. I know you think you got it all right, but he looks past all of that, Pastor Trina, and he resides, he on the inside of us. Well, good morning. I feel the anointing of God. Hey, I want you all, wherever you are, to simply prophetess Alicia, he resides in us. Hey, he resides in us. Sasha, he resides in us. Prophetess Denisha, he resides, hey, on the inside of us. He could have chose another place. Woo, I want y'all, prophetess Shamika over in the portal. He could have chose another place, huh? He could have looked at us and found us not worthy. <laughs> but from the inside of us, his spirit cries out. His anointing cries out. His strength is made perfect. Come on, Zion. All right. I, I feel like going right into the word of the Lord. I feel an anointing in this atmosphere. I want you wherever you are to throw flames of fire on the screen. I feel something. That, that worship right there. Woo. Oh, my. That worship did something for me. Come on, bless you all, wherever you are from, uh, wherever you're dialing in from. I want all of you to do me a favor. If you are on our Facebook page, I want you to write five people's name and invite them into this atmosphere. Let's do that over the next 30 seconds. And we are going right into the word of the Lord. I'm so grateful for another morning. I'm so grateful for yet another opportunity. And, and can I say what I heard the Lord, I was laying in the bed this morning, and I heard the Lord say this. The Lord said, this is not the hour to dishonor the prophetic. God have mercy. Woo! The atmosphere that, that many of you, if not all of you, just felt it was a prophetic atmosphere. I want you to understand it. Thank you all so much for sharing and inviting. I want you to hear that. 
And we're going to go deeper into that this morning. For this is not the hour, hey, to dishonor what God is saying. Hey, for this is not the hour, come on here, to dishonor the man or the woman that God is using, come on here, to be his legislator in the earth. I dare somebody to say God is speaking. Woo! God have mercy. God told me that as I was laying in the bed, he said, tell them this morning, hey, that this is a dangerous hour to dishonor. Watch this. Or to disregard, hey, what God is saying. I dare somebody to say God is speaking. Hey, <laughs> come on here. For this shall be a season for many where you don't have a whole lot to say. Because you're trying to listen to what God is saying. I'm sorry I can't answer every phone call. I'm sorry I can't respond to every email. I'm sorry I can't go to every cookout or every, every, every outing. Come on here. God says, tell my people this morning, for I have much to say. Woo! Ah, yeah, I hear you, God. For I have much to say. Come on here. And this is an hour where he is speaking. Let's go right into the word of the Lord. I want everyone, wherever you are, to simply put hidden on the screen. God have mercy. I feel something in this atmosphere. Just simply put hidden. Hey, and, and let me say this. God also shared with me, he said, for those who are not in tune, for those who don't believe in the prophet, what a, what, what a sad day, what, what a sad life, what, what a sad narrative for the person who doesn't believe God has anything fresh to say. Woo! <laughs> Come on, I know some of y'all caught that. He's speaking in a fresh way. Come on. He's moving in a, in a, in a, in a fresh way. Come on here. He's moving in a, in, in a new way. God have mercy. The Lord told me to tell you this this morning. He said, if you're not careful and if you're not in tune with the voice of the prophetic, the new year will creep in and it'll be like you oversleeping and then waking up into a new place and not knowing what's going on. God have mercy. That, that's how he gave it to me. Woo! That, that, that's how he gave it to me. He said, when you ignore what God is saying, when you ignore, come on here, what, what, what you're supposed to be doing, when, when you ignore those moments of prayer and those moments of devotion, and, and the Lord told me something different yesterday. He said, many people are choosing, come on here, to do something different instead of prayer. They're choosing to do something different. Some are seeking sage, God have mercy. Some are running to the psychic, God have mercy. Some are leading to their own understanding, and others idolize their career. Come on. They idolize their job. They idolize what they like doing their leisure time. Oh, but there is a day huh, and there is a time, hey, that is coming. And, and my declaration to this body, hey, is you will not be lost. Huh? You won't be confused. You will not be fumbling in the wilderness trying to figure out what is going on. You will not fumble into 2022. You will not be like that person. Th that's how he gave it to me. He literally showed me, literally, somebody set the alarm clock, didn't hear it go off, but they said it because they, they wanted to get up and be into 2022, that they wanted to know what God was doing. They really didn't want to miss what God was doing, but then they overslept. <laughs> somebody just say this and we're going to go right into the scripture. Don't oversleep. Woo, God have mercy. Don't oversleep. Hey. Don't find yourself, hey, for some of you it's literal, don't find yourself so addicted to sleep that you're not awake to hear what he is saying. Ah, yeah. For the intercessor, we're getting naps in this season. Come on, three hours here, two hours here, five hours if we're lucky. For the intercessor, he's keeping us awake huh, and he's getting us ready for the crossover. Huh. He's getting us ready for the great restoration that waits for us huh, in a double kind of way. God have mercy. Don't oversleep. <laughs> and there are a few of you. I see you. I see your names flashing up for your expectation for God to move and your expectation for God to do a new thing is so great that you wake up before the alarm clock, Woo! that you don't need an alarm clock. Who am I talking to? If I'm talking to you, just simply say, that's me. Don't, don't, don't. Sometimes it's kind of funny. I will wake up and this is real talk. I will wake up before the alarm clock and hit the snooze. Who is that? I'm not even asleep. I'm just sitting there meditating. Literally, literally. I'll wake up and I'll just be up. If you watch this, if you wake up before the alarm clock, then you really don't need it. All right, I'll come out of that. Woo! God says, don't ignore me. I'm telling on myself this morning, y'all. 
God says, don't ignore. Hit, don't hit the snooze button. Just jump on up. Just, just, just. But sometimes when you get, when you're just taking a whole bunch of naps, you, you get that little bit of extra Z's in there. But if you wake up before the alarm clock, you really don't need it. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? This is the season where Holy Spirit will be the alarm clock. Woo! Somebody say, sound the alarm. Huh? There's a lot of y'all in here. So I see y'all, Facebook, YouTube, portal. I see you, three different places. Place. I see you this morning. Woo! Come on here. Sound the alarm. Yeah, help me to jump on up. <laughs> Woo! God, have, let, let's go right into the scripture. I feel an anointing this morning. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. And we're going to read from the King James Version. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this hour. We thank you for the prophetic. Uh, we thank you that you love us enough to speak to us. For him speaking to us is an ultimate act of love. We serve the only God, hey, that speaks to us. Woo! We serve the only true and living God that endows us with power. No other God can do that. Woo! Come on. All right. I'll come out of it. First Timothy. Hey, I'm excited this morning. <laughs> 1 Timothy 1 and 18, King James Version, and it reads like this. This charge I commit unto thee. Someone say, I have a charge to keep. Ooh, God, I, I wonder who, who knows what that. I have a mandate to keep. Come on here. I have been commissioned. God have mercy. I have been sent to a dispensation such as this. Ooh, come on here. Let me say this. I want all of you to understand before we even go any further that you have a charge to keep. Do you still know your charge? Hey, opposition came, questions came, skepticism came, doubt came, warfare came, come on, frustration came, come on, slander came. Woo, you, you was winning out loud and people got mad. Woo, don't forget that you have a charge. Hey. You have a commission, hey, and you have an assignment. See, Grandma Nim would say this back in the day, and it didn't make sense back then. Oh, but it, how it makes sense through this time right here. So you have a charge to keep. So this charge I commit unto thee. And this is the Apostle Paul talking to his son Timothy. And then it says, Son Timothy, according to the prophecies, woo, which went before on thee. Somebody say, I have a word over my life. Come on here. I have a word over my life, Prophet Shamika. I don't care what things look like. Hey, I don't care about the opposition. And so, watch this, Prophet Joyce. Some of you will get to the place where it doesn't even matter about the delay. I still have a word over my life. And the Lord reminds me, even in this moment, as I was preparing for, 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 for teaching this morning, and I'm ready this morning, God told me to tell some of you this, and I want you to hear me. He says, for many of you, this will feel like a season. This will be a season of you starting over, but it will not feel like it. God have mercy. I want you to mar mar marinate on that and meditate on that. God told me to tell some of you, I'm going to reset things in your life. Woo! I'm going to reset things in your relationships. I'm going to reset things in your career. Woo! I'm going to reset things in ministry. Huh? I'm going to reset things in your community. But the interesting thing about it, Prophet is Denisha, he said, but tell them that it will not feel like starting over. Because sometimes you start over and it feels like you're starting over. And it feels like you've lost everything. And it feels like you're living in the pain of yesterday. And it feels like you don't have no friends. And it feels like nobody understands. But, but hear the word of the Lord. Many of you are getting ready to start over. Woo! Somebody say the supernatural reset. But it won't feel like it. Woo! <laughs> and it won't look like it. You'll be starting over and people around you will covet what you have. They will covet what your life looks like. I'm starting over, he, but it'll be God. I heard him say that and I don't know who that's for. He said, tell them they will start over. Hey, <laughs> oh, but it'll be a glorious time and you will have more. Woo, somebody ought to shout more. Can I flow like I feel it this morning? I woke up I woke up ready to preach this morning. Come on here, and you shall have more in this latter place. Hey, 
God have mercy. All right. And so he says, son Timothy, 1 Timothy 1 and 18, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. There was a word, and I want you to be taking notes to understand this. There is a prophetic word that goes before you that paves the way for your life. You may feel like you're living in a moment that has not happened before, Woo! but I dare a few prophetic people to say, I've been here before. And so because a prophetic word goes before you, you are just living out what has already been established, God have mercy, in the heavenly dimension. And I want you to understand this because sometimes, Cousin Shirley, the enemy would try to cause you to feel like God doesn't have need of you. Sometimes the enemy would try to cause you to feel like there's so many of this and so many of that in the earth that you're not necessary. I want you to understand that because of the prophetic and because of the power of, 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 of prophetic words going forth, and I want you to see this like I see it. Literally, when a prophetic word is spoken over your life and it's God, am I talking about false prophets? Am I talking about false apostles? Am I talking about people who are operating uh, uh, in the soulish realm and calling that prophetic? I'm talking about when you truly hey, have a prophet in your ear. Hey, God have mercy. Hey. Somebody say, thank you for the prophet. Hey, thank you for the prophet. When a prophet comes into agreement with what heaven and earth decree and declare about your life, the prophetic word will pave the way before you get there. And so when you walk through that path that the prophetic word sets for the course of your life, you don't experience the warfare. Watch this. Because the word has gone before thee. I want y'all to hear this. Woo! No matter what has happened in the pandemic, the word of God still remains. No matter that you feel like you are behind, come on here, the word of God that has been spoken over your life, it still remains. Woo! Ah. And then watch this. That thou by them mightest war a good warfare. There is a kind of warfare that is good. Woo! Can, can y'all hear me this morning? Is my mic turned on to, to the right volume? There, it says that, that, that I, I never read it like this before. It says, watch this, Pastor Erica, that thou by them mightest war, a good warfare. What is a good warfare? A good warfare is warfare that comes against you, but because of your faith, your history, the anointing, the power of God, come on here, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, you win that warfare. Warfare that is good is warfare, come on here, that God enables you to win in. Eh. This is why it's important to be in the will of God, in the purpose of God. When you are in the purpose of God, and when you are in the timing of God, and when you are in the plan of God, you will experience warfare, but it will be good warfare because you will be empowered to win. Woo. I dare some victorious people to say, I'm empowered to win. You cannot skip warfare. You cannot go around it. No shortcuts. Warfare will come, but it'll be good because when you're in the will of God, he gives you everything you need to win. Everything you need, prophetess Patrice, to be victorious. Here it is. And then verse 19 says this. Holding faith and a good conscience, God have mercy, which some having put away concerning having faith made shipwreck. I want to read this from the Amplified Version. 1 Timothy 1 and 18 again, Amplified Version. And we're going to move forward. I feel Holy Spirit working. This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, so that inspired and aided. I want you to say that. Inspired and aided. Watch this. By them, you may fight the good fight in contending with false teachers. The prophetic, it inspires you and it should aid you. Come on here. Those who are prophetic, those who want to prophesy, come on here. When you prophesy, when you speak into others' life, God have mercy, the word of the Lord should inspire them and it should aid them. Let me ask you a question. Who do you aid? 
Come on here. Whose life becomes inspired or better because they are connected to you? Come on here. I'm talking to the prophetic people. If you know you are prophetic, I simply want you to shout, that's me. Some of y'all are kind of lifting your hands sideways because you kind of still running from the prophetic. But I talked to you a few weeks ago that the prophetic will expose you. Woo! The prophetic will creep up on you in your secular meeting. God have mercy. Woo! Who do you aid? Who is better because of their connection and alliance with you? We are supposed to be an aid to other people. Who decides not to take their life because you showed up? Who, who becomes stronger? Hey, whose mind is regulated? Huh? Come on, there is something going on in these last few months of the year and God says, I am pouring out a greater measure of my anointing upon those, hallelujah, who want to prophesy. I want you to understand there is nothing wrong with you wanting to be for prophetic. There is nothing wrong with you wanting to prophesy. I'll get to that in a moment. Then verse 19 says this. Keeping your faith. Somebody say, I'm keeping my faith. Somebody say, I'm keeping my faith. Watch this. Leaning completely on God. Watch this. With absolute trust and confidence in his guidance. In having a good conscience. May God deal with our conscience in this season. May our conscience not be seared. My God. May we not lose our God consciousness in this season. May the things that break God's heart bother our heart and trouble our heart and keep us awake and, and, and push us into moments of intercession. Watch this. And I want you to hear this. For some people have rejected their moral compass. I want y'all to write that in your notes. Don't lose your moral conscience. Eh? Don't lose your moral compass. This is the spirit of God, hey, that directs you and guides you and helps to, 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 to tilt you in a particular direction and take you out of harm's way. Come on, don't lose, hey, your moral compass. And here's where I go crazy with it and have made a shipwreck of their faith. I want every apostolic person to say this on the screen. For I shall not shipwreck. Every prophetic and apostolic person, I want you to write that on the screen. I shall not shipwreck. In other words, I'm not going to lose my mind. Come on here. Some of you, you've been experiencing moments where things have been looking crazy and it's like you don't, you don't know how to explain things. The, the enemy has been trying to cause some of you to wreck the ship. But the Spirit of the Lord sent me on a Sunday morning, the second Sunday in November. And he told me, he said, tell them that you're not going to shipwreck. The ship will not wreck because you're on it. Whoa, God have mercy. The ship will not wreck because you were on it. The ship, watch this. Woo! For those of you who love church, you'll love this. The ship will not wreck because you have a charge to keep. There is a commission, hey. There is an assignment, hey, that must come to pass so the ship cannot wreck. Woo! And I just feel led to say this again. You're not going to lose your mind. Hey, you're not going to lose momentum. You're not going to lose power. And God told me to tell you, and this is for a few of you that are in front of the people, you will not lose your influence. Woo! God told me that I'm increasing influence. I'm increasing expo exposure. And God says, I'm going to give some of you platforms in this season. I'm going to give you platforms so you won't have to seek for it. Somebody say, opportunities are looking for me. I want y'all to get this word in your spirit. Opportunities are looking for you. You'll get phone calls. Ooh, you'll get text messages. You'll get emails. Come on. You'll get letters in the mail. Because God has a charge that you must keep. So I want you to first understand when we look at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 through 19, the first thing I want you to understand is that, uh, is that Timothy is being reminded of the prophetic words that have been spoken over his life by the Apostle Paul. But most importantly, uh, Timothy is being encouraged about his future role in the church. I want you to understand that the enemy will do whatever he has to do to cause you to believe 
that you don't have a role in the future of the church. Somebody just say this, long live the church. Woo, God have mercy. I feel something so peculiar in here this morning. Somebody just say, long live the church. And so Apostle Paul is taking his time to talk and to encourage Timothy and to remind him that you have a role in the future of the church. Someone needs to hear that. You may not get a thousand people to log on when you come on, but watch this. A thousand people's life has been touched. Come on here because of who you do know. God have mercy. Because sometimes the numbers mess with you. Sometimes who's in the room and who's not in the room and who's online and who didn't come to church and who's watching from a different location and all that type of stuff discourages you. Your impact is greater than you know. Woo. Your reach is further than you know. I don't know. Who is that for? Ah, there might be five in the room. But of the five in the room, one of them is connected to thousands. God have mercy. So, somebody say, I just need one. Woo. I, I, I just need one. All right. And so I want you to understand, when we look at 1 Timothy 1 and 18, I want you to first take note of two words. This charge. The prophetic will always remind you that you were sent here for the charge. You were sent here to accomplish the Great Commission. And whenever it's no longer about you converting unsaved souls to the kingdom of God, then you will always deviate from the charge. You're only prophetic because people need access to the future so they can be found. Watch this, Pastor Trina. We are only pastoral because souls need to be shepherded and watched over so that they don't shipwreck. You are only, uh, uh, God only allows you to flow in the gift, the office, and the anointing of the evangelist because there is a lost and dying generation out there. Woo! The gift that God places on your life only should enable you to keep your charge. I want you to not forget this. I have a charge to keep. Back up discouragement. Woo, I got work to do. Woo, get away from me frustration. Come on here. God sent me to do this. All right, watch this. And so when we think about those two words, this charge, this is to make a decree by something sacred. God told me to tell you, that don't spend another day taking for granted the grace, the gift, the ability that I put upon your life. Somebody say, this is sacred. Woo, come on here. And, and I want you to understand this, watch this Mary, because when something is sacred, you take different care of it. Come on, when something is sacred, you don't just throw it around. You don't let dust build up on it. Come on, for the ones who are gifted. But don't think the earth needs your gift. You are so necessary. So you must understand that when uh, the Apostle Paul said this charge, he's really reiterating a decree or he's putting an emphasis on saying something that is sacred. Woo, God have mercy. Uh -huh. I heard the Lord tell me to encourage a few of you and to remind you that you are a sacred gift. God have mercy. Listen to this, Tanya. You are a sacred gift. And for some of you, you are God's secret weapon. Oh my. You are God's secret weapon. That's why he brings you out last. God have mercy. That's for the people who, who, were, who were late doing a gifting, who were late to the conversation, who found the invite in their spam mail. You are God's secret weapon. Woo. I, I wish somebody would grab a hold of that. And then also when we look at this charge, this is a de declaration that is made before God. Woo! Come on here. This is a declaration that is made before God. And then I want you to see this part because if you miss this part, you'll miss your inheritance. Yeah. I want y'all to understand this. The Apostle Paul was able to have this position. And God told me to tell you, some of you, God has put people in a particular position in your life. Spiritual authority spiritual mentorship but watch this and i want to read it. it says this charge i commit unto thee son timothy somebody say he was a son Woo! all right 
I, I'm going I'm to touch this for a moment, but I'm not going to touch it long. Somebody say, he was a son. God, God told me to ask you a question. Are you a son? Are you a daughter? I know we live in a day and a time where some may not believe in spiritual sons and spiritual daughters. And that's okay. We're not here to even comment on that this morning. God told me to tell you, I must as, at least consider you to be my son. Because a lot of abuse has happened under son. You my son and you my daughter. And you really controlling people and manipulating people. And then there are leaders that want you to honor them as a spiritual parent. parent better than you honor your natural parents. The devil is a liar. Holy Spirit told me to tell you this morning, even if you may not have a spiritual father, even if you don't have a spiritual mother, God says, come on here. I still want you to be my son and I want you to be my daughter. And this is why this part is important. This sonship, come on here. This you being a daughter of God, watch this. God told me to tell you, there are some things that only sons and daughters inherit. Woo! I want y'all to feel the weight of that. There are some things, hey, that only sons and daughters inherit. There are some type of blessings. There are some type of things that, that only when someone sees you as a son, hey, woo! And when someone sees you as a daughter, and if that's God, we okay with that. Because everybody's a relational status is different with their leader or with the person. God says, get ready to obtain your inheritance. <laughs> Somebody say, this is mine. I want y'all to understand the weight of Timothy and Paul's relationship. Somebody say, this is mine. All right. And then watch this. God literally, if you cannot tell already, has been dealing with me so heavily about the prophetic. And God told me to tell some of you. God, because some of you are asking, why hasn't the word of the Lord come to pass in my life? I was supposed to have my own this by now. I was supposed to be married or I was supposed to be this or I was supposed to have this type of career or I was supposed to be healed or, or I was supposed to have this kind of business or, or things are supposed to look like this. Watch this. God says in this season, I want to be able to trust your life to manifest my word in it. Woo. Did y'all hear that? I'm going to say that again. God said, I want to be able to trust your life to manifest my word in it. In other words, can God trust our life to allow his word to come to pass? Sometimes it's not a manifestation issue. Sometimes, Prophet Alicia, it's a matter of God, can you trust me? I want all of you by faith to simply say this, God, you can trust me. When God can trust you, he'll have no problem allowing prophetic words to come to pass in your life at an accelerated speed. But sometimes God is still working on a part of us. And when he's not working on you, watch this, he's working on them. Woo, all right. <laughs> then I want you in this scripture, to pay special attention to when the Apostle Paul says, according to the prophecies. I want you to write that in your notes and write it on the screen. According to the prophecies. And so when you look at this particular scripture, a lot of what the Apostle Paul was doing was encouraging and reminding Timothy. He just wanted him to remember. He wanted him to remember. The title of this message is, don't forget. God told me to tell y'all this. Don't forget what I have said. Don't forget your charge to keep. Don't forget that you are a speaking spirit. Woo, watch this. Don't forget that some of you are just getting started. Don't forget, oh, I hear you, God. God told me to tell you, don't forget that I have favor on reserve for you. Woo, I have an abundance locked away for you. I have a treasure chest and I'm going to give you the key to get in. God said, don't forget the prophecies that have been spoken over your life. God also told me that as we are closing up this year, you want to make sure that you have close proximity to the prophetic. Woo, to prophetic people. People who have the ability to hear God. 
People who have the ability to be heaven's legislator, his demonstrator on the earth. God says, don't forget. And then also hearing God tell me to tell you, I didn't forget about you. Now that only means something. Hey, if you have some stuff that you really been waiting on God. I, I won't say that again. God told me to tell you, I didn't forget about you. So don't you forget. You got a part in the charge. Woo. Come on here. There is a, there is a, there is a, um, what's the word? There, there are expectations and, and, and there are rules to this thing. God says, if you don't forget, I can't forget. Somebody say he can't forget. And then I want you to understand this. God will oftentimes use mothers and fathers in the faith to affirm your faith. Prophet Shemika, oftentimes God would use mothers and fathers in the gospel to remind you of what God said. Why is this important to you? God says, I'm bringing such a healing with apostolic mothers and fathers and them being able to love correct, correctly, to cultivate others correctly. I want you to hear this because some of you that are looking and watching, you've been done really wrong by apostolic mothers and fathers. God says, I'm bringing a healing for that. The type of trans, trans um, the, 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 what's the word? The impartation, there it is. The impartation that happened between the apostle Paul and Timothy, it only happened because that was a healthy relationship. Can I tell you that God is purifying relationships between the father and the mother? The son and the daughter, rather the daughter and the father. And he's purifying these relationships all throughout the earth so they won't be perverted. He's purifying these relationships and these, 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 these type of covenants so the impartation can take place. Somebody say the impartation. When the relationship, and I want you to see this between Timothy and Paul, when the relationship is pure, God have mercy, when the relationship is correct, there is a strength that happens with the faith of the son of the daughter. And because this relationship is pure, you will not be able to shipwreck. I want you to write this again. I will not shipwreck. I want you to write that on the screen. I will not shipwreck. God told me to also tell you as we're getting ready to close here. He says, tell them, that I am getting ready to illuminate and I am getting ready to highlight the prophetic in this season like never before. <clears throat> but I want you to write this on the screen also. I know I'm doing a whole lot of call and response. I want you to write this. I am so prophetic. And I want you because God really put the prophet on my heart really heavy. So I'm going to go into a little bit of prophetic teaching and we're done. God told me to tell you as prophetic people, Never forget that you are heaven's legislator and demonstrator on the earth. You represent God. God says, I want to use your mouth to say things in meetings. And I want to use your mind. Come on here to understand. I want to I use your mind to process what's going on in heaven. So that you'll be able to articulate it in the earth. And men understand what God's thinking. Woo! You have a great responsibility as a prophetic one. God says, don't forget that you are one who speaks forth. Woo, come on here. So you were put on this earth, come on here, to sound the alarm. God's getting ready to give some of you assignments in the earth that will not be comfortable. They will not be comfortable. In fact, God said, I'm getting ready to give some of you prophetic topics of discussion that you'll have to teach, and it will be extremely controversial, but heaven will back you up. Woo. Somebody say, heaven is my backup. Come on here. Heaven is my backup. And so God's going to give you words. He's going to give you wisdom and insight of how to deal with things on the earth, but you cannot forget your charge. You cannot forget your assignment. Watch this. Never forget that you are supposed to speak on behalf of God. 
I dare some of you that understand what I'm saying to simply say, I speak for God. Woo! You are, I want you to understand as a prophetic person, he uses your voice to declare and to decree in the earth. Come on here. Come on. He uses your voice and your voice is worthy. You know, I always say you don't have to be perfect, but you must be pure. And I'll say it like this. May the pure arise. May those who we can trust the hands of in this season, may they arrive, arise in Jesus name. Behind what you are saying as a prophetic person, I want you to understand that there is a spiritual force that will break spiritual bondages off of people. In other words, because you are prophetic, you are a spiritual force and you are responsible for making sure that other people come out of bondage. You're responsible if you're connected to a person and they are struggling. Hey, come on here. Somebody say, I'm responsible. So God puts a, a, a spiritual force to back up the words that are coming out of the prophetic one's mouth. And then because of this force on the inside of prophetic people, he gives them creative power. Woo! This is you having the ability to speak a thing and it come into existence. I dare somebody to say, I possess creative power. I was studying this and the Lord told me to tell you, for many of you, you are about to speak the reality before you live in it. God have mercy. As speaking spirits, as prophetic people who God has put, you have the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to create what you want to live in. Who am I talking to? To create the reality that works best for you. This is why I told you in the beginning, many of you are getting ready to start over, but it will not feel like it. Woo, I feel the anointing right there. You're gonna start over, but it will not feel like it. Creative power will allow a person who is behind time to speak into a, a, a season called ahead of time and then walk into that space and then occupy it like they've been there the whole time. You are more powerful than you know. The power that God, watch this prophetess Patrice, the power that God has placed on the inside of us allows us to be so creative through the power of the Holy Spirit. May creativity be stirred up on the inside of you today. May you be able to walk in authority. May you be able to walk in power and you won't even have to turn the door now. You'll be able to kick the door down because you have power and authority. I want you to write this. I was still sent here for this. We're done. I was still sent here for this. I'm going to keep my charge. My relationships will be purified. God have mercy. Woo. Come on here. May you receive the impartation. Oftentimes, when you have been hidden for a season, you forget. <laughs> Don't forget this morning. Don't allow your season of being hidden, of feeling forgotten, of feeling like an afterthought to cause you to forget. Somebody say, I won't forget. I won't forget about the goodness of God. I won't forget about his promises. I won't forget about his charge that I must keep in the earth. I want to say this, and for some of you, you're going to know what I mean right when I say it. God is teaching many of you in this season how to pivot so that he can enlarge your territory. God have mercy. God, I'm going to say it again. God told me the reason why he doesn't want you to forget is because he's getting ready to, watch this, teach you and give you the tenacity to pivot so that he can enlarge your territory. Somebody say expansion is here. He's getting ready to give you more. He's getting ready to bless you more. For some of you, you've been in need of a financial breakthrough. God says, get ready to receive it. You'll, know, you'll have to know how to pivot. Come on here. You'll have to know how to pivot. And it will be the voice of the prophetic that will, will tell you, turn this way broadcast on this day 
go to this conference, travel to this meeting, watch this TV show, watch this mentorship. The prophetic will always give you direction of how to pivot. Watch this. You will only shipwreck if you lose your moral compass. Your moral compass is your ability to hear God and obey. Somebody said, I will hear and I will obey. Woo. Watch this. I will hear. God, I will hear. I will be a son of yours, God. I will be a daughter of yours, God. Come on, whatever, whichever one fits you. God, I will not miss it because of my moral compass. I'll be able to hear and discern good from evil. That's the moral compass. I will not be so compromised. He, come on here. I will not live a life of comp compromise. Come on. We will not live lives of, of carnality. I want everybody to write this. Don't forget. That's what he told me to tell y'all this morning. He says, tell them, don't forget. Miss Roth, he said, don't forget. Woo. Don't forget. We have a charge to keep. We have assignments. Come on here. We have mandates. We have things that God has commissioned us here on the earth to do. And so what he's going to do is he's getting ready like never before to surround you with extremely prophetic people. And for some of you, it's going to scare you like this message is scaring you. How did he know this? How was God? How did God let him in my prayer closet this morning? God loves you so much. And I want you, if you forget everything we talked about this morning, I want you to remember that. Don't forget. Don't God doesn't forget. So don't you forget. Woo! Come on here. God told me to tell you that what he has for your life is worth remembering. Somebody say, and it's worth it. And we're done. And it's worth it. For this is the word of the Lord. And God gave me this because oftentimes when you've been on the back side of the desert, he, God have mercy. Sometimes you forget what God has spoken over your life. And, and what I love about that story in 1 Timothy, Paul's, uh, the Apostle Paul's assignment was to remind Timothy that God has spoken a word over your life. He, come on here. And because God spoke it, it must come to pass. Well, you all, it's sowing time. I want all of you, we jump right into the service, but I want you to grab a seed. And I want you to grab your tithe. Somebody say it's giving time. And this is a good moment for you to sow. Usually we do our tithe in the beginning, but I felt the unctioning of the Holy Spirit to go right into the, work, the message. So I want every tither. If you are a tither, I simply want you to say, I am a tither. All right? If you, and, and then if you're not tithing, if this is not your week to tithe, I want you to go right into um, whatever God's going to put on your heart to give for an offer. Let's do our confession at this time. All right? I want us to read this. Today is my day of supernatural debt cancellation. Today is the day that God brings me to my wealthy place. Today is the day of my favor because God has anointed me for wealth. Somebody say, I'm anointed for wealth and I'm ready to move in my position. Today I'm a covenant commander of wealth. Today I hear his voice because I do not harden my heart. I am ready to sow today. I am ready to receive today. Today our hearts are fixed trusting in the Lord and we will never be broke another day in our life because the day God is our only provider of wealth. Money cometh to us now in the name of Jesus. All money knows our name and is seeking us out today. May wealth overtake us today because we are money missionaries. We know what to do with money and wealth today. Abundance, healing, and prosperity Come to our houses now in Jesus' name. I want you to go ahead and if you're tithing, I want every tither to tithe at this time. And I want everyone to sow an offering at this time as well, all right? I'm going to give you about 60 seconds and we're going to come back and move further in our service.
as you're tithing, as you're giving, I'll simply want you to write on the screen, and it is so. I want you all to write that, and it is so. Such an anointing in this atmosphere, and it is so. God, we thank you for every tither. God, we thank you for every giver this morning. But God, we thank you this morning that you remember us. Ah, that you don't forget us. That you remember us even we forget about ourselves, God. You remember us. God, we thank you. Come on, come on, Zion. Lift it up right here. Thank you, God, for remembering us. Ah, thank you that you don't forget about us. Some of you, your grandchildren are on your mind. Your spouse is on your mind. I come to tell you this morning, don't you forget because God doesn't forget. God, we thank you. Hey, he always remembers. Hey, yeah, yeah. He always remembers. Woo! He always remembers. He always remembers what we need. And because he is God, hey, he cannot forget. All right. Let me stop before I turn it into the worship room. But I sense the song of the Lord. Well, God bless you all. I want you to make sure that you connect with us and, and make sure that if you need to call someone, they're posting the ministry line on the screen. All right, here it is right here. If you need to, to have a ministry leader to pray with you, call our 866 number right now. We have ministry leaders that are standing by, waiting to pray with you. You may say, I need to know the Lord. I want to give my heart and life to Jesus. Call our ministry line and someone will walk you through what to pray, what to study, and how to live this glorious life called a kingdom life. Last but not least, if you want to become a member of this amazing church, you can call our 866 number or you can go to marcusrivers.org and simply click join our e-church to become a member of our church. It's a safe place. It's a safe place. It's a place to heal. It's a place to recover. And we are an apostolic house, so we believe that we send out the gifts into the world, all right? Well, you are. I love you. God bless you. Make sure you join us this week on the prayer line. Make sure you are logged in Monday. And make sure you're logged in on Wednesday, all right, at 7.30 a.m., all right? I love you all so much. I pray that today blessed you. God, that was, God told me, he said, tell you, he said, remind them, don't forget. He doesn't forget, so don't you forget, all right? I love you. I pray a special blessing upon every tither. Thank you all so much for your tithing, for your sowing, especially for your prayers and for your support. I feel them. I feel them. And I appreciate you, all right? I love you all. Remember, there's no midweek service this month, all right? So enjoy your week. Make sure, if by chance you are not a part of the inner circle, make sure you join us tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, all right? There's a word from the Lord. I can't hardly wait to give it to you, all right? I love you. God bless you. You all have an amazing day, and I'll see you again real soon. We'll see you next Sunday right here as we continue the word of the Lord. As you leave this place, but never his presence, I simply want you to say, thank you, God, for never forgetting. Thank you, God, for remembering. All right? Love you. God bless you, and shalom.